pumasak. Uh, ayun, ngayong araw, kung uh, napanood nyo yung live stream ko dun sa Facebook page ko, binanggit ko na papalipad ako ng aeroplano. So, ngayon yung araw na yun. Pagpunta ako ng airport, bali, meron akong one hour na ground school. Tapos after ng ground school, yung actual flight. Hindi ko sure kung ano yung mga pwede kong videohan, pero feeling ko naman sa aeroplano, pwede akong mag-video. Yun nga lang, Uh, since may headset, baka hindi ako pwede mag, mag head strap so ang, ang bumili ako ng chest mount para nandito na lang yung gopro sa chest ko na super view naman yun, so maganda, maganda pa rin naman siguro may kita nyo, yun nga lang hindi ka kaya pag nasa ulo ko na kung saan ako tumitingin nandun din yung camera eh yun lang kasi meron ako dito eh tsaka kasi nga naka headset so baka mamaya ma ano maharangan yung ewan ko, 100% sure magsi chest mount ako sa aeroplano uh, sana mabait yung, yung instructor ko para makapag video tayo so yun, magdadrive muna ako then babalik ako kaya pag nasa airport na ako ayun mga kapasak dito na tayo sa airport ayun, kita natin yung mga small planes kita ba yan ayun, mga ses na Cessna 172 Pero yung uh, sasakyan ko ngayon is ganun, Piper Warrior Yung 172 kasi high wing eh High wing meaning nasa, nasa bubong yung pakpak Yung Piper, nando nasa gitna, nasa baba ng fuselage Fuselage, yung katawan ng aeroplano Ayan, yan pala, mas malapit, ayan o oh. Diba nasa gitna yung pakpak Pero hindi ko alam kung alin mismo dyan yung aeroplano Na para sa akin ngayon Nihintay ko lang yung instructor ko kasi papunta na raw. Mukhang masungit, tinawagan ko eh. eh. Okay lang yun. Basta, yan, babalikan ko kayo kapag... Uh, it's either pag, pag, pagbalik ko sa inyo, nasa aeroplano na, or baka may mga maisingit ako dun sa, sa loob ng airport. So, yun, sana mabait siya. Sana hindi siya, ano, sana hindi siya asshole. <laughs> yan, so ito yung setup natin ngayon, mga kapasak. Uh, chest mount siya ng GoPro. Pwede na siguro to tapos hindi uh, ko alam baka sobrang ingay baka gamitin ko yung mic tapos i-clip ko na lang dito para kahit paano naririnig nyo ako kung sakali man nagsalita ako pero basta bahala na basta yan, yan yung mount ko kaya kung medyo mababa man o medyo wala kayong makita pasensya na kayo kasi ay, hindi talaga uber yung, yung head strap dito ayun, kita kits fuel time How long have you had this airplane? This airplane for like maybe about uh, five and a half years. It's, uh, yeah, five and a half years. And the other one for like two years. Two years. A, a year and three quarter, a year and eight months. Adding another airplane in like a few months. Oh, what kind of airplane? Either the, like this one or like this one. You never had uh, 172s? No. No? No, I don't like them. They're not, the, is it, they're not is attractive. Because most, most people that fly them, our customers, they like the low wing. Mm -hmm, yeah. I, I asked, it's not about me. I mean, I don't like them, but if the customer liked that, I would get one. Yeah. But the feedback, I get people like this and that more. The low mm -hmm. wing. It's yeah. much better in uh, winds, too. Oh, the low wing ones? Yeah. We're gonna try to do most of it outside. It's too hot in here. You mm -hmm. gotta go crazy. We gotta mm -hmm. let it cool down. Sure. Once the engine starts, it gets cooler. So to get on the wing, Clyde, put your left foot on that. This step, step right here. And put the right foot on the gray here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just come stand up. Come you see, there's six instruments. You see that? Yes, sir. It, all airplane forces and flight controls work on the Newster law of motion. I wouldn't say like that to somebody that wasn't going through AMP school, yeah. <laughs> but I know you'd understand. Yeah. Okay, so the air entering that tube, the reciprocal that is how fast the airplane is going through the air is our airspeed. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. It's color-coded for different airspeed operations. 
white area is called a flap operating range. That's a flap, which uh, I'll describe in a second. Mm -hmm. Green is a normal cruising range. Yellow is called the uh, turbulent airspeed penetration range. In other words, if it gets turbulent, you shouldn't be flying that. It could put structural stress on the airplane. Mm -hmm. And the red is never exceed speed, and that's more structural cruising speed. So to perform a turn, you have to use a combination of aileron, which we used, and rudder. So let's say you want to make go to the left. You would start turning the yoke to the left. At the same time, you would apply a little left rudder at the same time. So a combination of aileron and rudder will give you a coordinated turn. See? Rudder mm -hmm. and aileron. So the ball is rudder, the airplane is aileron. So putting the two together, you get a coordinated turn. But if you don't maintain back pressure as you're turning, the airplane will go down. The steeper the bank, the more you have to hold back pressure. Mm -hmm. But if you're making a small turn, you keep pulling back, you're going to climb. You don't want to do too much either. Gotcha. Okay. So it's a combination of rudder and aileron will cause you to turn. That's one of the four fundamentals of flight. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. 30 is considered a medium bank turn. Anything less than medium is a standard rate turn, a normal turn. Anything beyond a medium, up to, up to 45 is medium, then 45 and more is steep. And the steeper the bank, the more you have to hold back pressure, or else it's going to go down in a turn. And put it behind there, check the flap. This is called the right main landing gear. Yeah. And the strut. The strut is a shock absorber, it absorbs the impact of landing so it doesn't damage the landing gear and the wing. Check this for at least like two or three fingers, it's got more. Yeah. Okay, this is the brake caliper. Make sure it's not coming off. The brake caliper houses the brake pads. Check the disc, make sure it's not cracked. So the way the brakes work, you apply the right, the right tip of the rudder mm -hmm. on the top, and this presses, on, uh, captures the uh, disc and it stops this from spinning. Mud guard prevents mud or water to hit the strut. Check the tire for inflation and thread. Okay, that's good, no leaks. We take fuel out of the tank, we're checking for contamination, water and dirt. This is 100 octane low lead, low lead fuel, light blue, okay? Yeah. If you saw water, you'd see bubbles, and you see it on the bottom. See nothing, it's good. Check the fuel. It's full, you see that? Yeah, it's top off. Those are the overflow holes, you see that on the side? See that? If it's overfilled, just start filling it. Where is that? Over there, see that pipe right there? Oh, right. it's gonna leak through there? Yeah. Come over here. This is the transponder antenna amplifier. Uh -huh. So radar comes from air traffic control, bounces off that amplifier, goes to them, that's how they pick you up on radar. You gotta make sure that amplifier is not broken, right? Okay, come over here. This is a relative new engine. It's got like maybe 40 hours on it. Really? The whole engine? It's a brand new over new overhauled engine, see? So this is a Lycoming 0320 engine. The recommended overhaul is 2,000 hours. So this has ages to go. It's just a brand new engine. Check for leaks. I don't see anything. Okay, so whenever you want to open the oil dipstick, you don't want to just turn it. Yeah. You can rip it out of the bottom. You grab it like this. That's it. And eight quarts is maximum. Anything beyond, beyond that is beneath that is good. Five quarts is minimum. It's at over six. And you want to only hand tighten it. Uh, yeah. See that? That's it. That's it. Because by heat, it expands, compresses, and makes it even tighter. Or else the next person, if they come here and you, do, you don't do that, they'll have a tough time getting it off. This is closed. This is not closed. Mm -hmm. Whenever you do a pre-flight inspection, at the end, you got to do another walk around to make sure you didn't miss anything. Yeah. Never think you're perfect, you know? Yeah. You can put your hand in there. I have a pin belt. You, 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 you're in AP school, you know what an alternator does, right? Yeah. Alternator generates electricity, maintains electricity for the electrical system, and keeps the battery charged. This is the propeller. It's a new propeller, too. Check for damage. The propeller is responsible for thrust. As the propeller turns, it throws the air backwards. Moves third law of motion, creating equal and opposite reaction propelling the aircraft forwards, right? Yeah. Exactly. Jet propulsion is taken from this. They take, they took blades and they put 10 of them inside a engine, renamed them compressor blades, but they're all propellers. Okay, so it's the same concept. 
This is called a spinner. So the air hits the spinner, it's cone shaped, forcing it to spread all over the propeller, giving it more thrust. That's why it's shaped like this. Gotcha. So check this for damage. Landing light, we put on the landing light for takeoff and landing, for traffic avoidance and for the tower to see us. Engine intake, engine exhaust. Front strut should be three or four fingers. Pull down, it's good. Front tower is still good too. As long as you see thread, you're good. Once you start losing the thread, then it becomes bald. Yeah. Then you gotta watch out. You gotta start. You're gonna start seeing cord. Mm -hmm. If you see cord, you better not go because you're gonna have a blowout. Your grow pole is working. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, how does the fuel system in this airplane work? Okay. A high wing does not have a fuel pump, and those the newer ones do. They have what's called an aux fuel pump. But generally, a high high wing airplane is fed fuel to the engine through gravity, through the force of gravity. Mm -hmm. See where the wings are? Yeah. See where the engine are? By gravity. Okay. Now, low-wing aircraft, even jets, work on more conventional procedures. They, they have to use a fuel pump to get it to the engine. So, on this airplane, the fuel line is over here. You see this? Yeah. There's a fuel strainer. It's stopping it before it gets to the engine, right? So, what does that tell you? It means there's a fuel line here. So, whichever tank you select, you can select left and right tank. It has no choice but to go through the fuel line to a fuel strainer, to the electric fuel pump, to the fuel line, to the engine, to the mechanical fuel pump. Okay, so to start the airplane, you have to have the electric fuel pump on because you're, you're, you're priming it with fuel, all right? But what you're doing is, as it comes here, we check for water in the tanks. What if there's water already in the fuel line here and we didn't check the tanks? Or we did, but there's already water here. If we don't check this, this is going to go to the engine. Yeah. So we want to check this also. Clear. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, do you understand it? We checked the brake fluid below the reservoir here too. Go ahead, check. Now the electric fuel pump is also responsible if you use it for landing too. Because if you take off without the electric fuel pump being on, even though the engine is running, if that mechanical fuel pump fails, is you it have gonna, an engine failure. It's gonna start. So you leave this on as a backup on takeoff. So if that fails, it'll keep the engine running. You can come back. Same thing on landing. But once you get a thousand feet above ground level, you can shut that off because you have height. Yeah. So even if the engine uh, fails due to the fuel pump or mechanical one, you have time to put the electrical one on, the engine will come back on, you can land. Safety procedure, on takeoff and landing, it should be on as a backup. So I if I would say my airplane, you're off the controls. I say your airplane, then I get off the controls. Sure. Okay, all right. Clear.
Shut down. Mm -hmm. Alright. Carburetor heat off. Throttle back to 1000. We, we have to keep the fuel pump on on takeoff and landing. As a backup. Yeah, as a backup. Case that fails. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very good. So on takeoff, I have full power. If I see thing, anything falling on the grid, I'm going to board the takeoff.
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Doesn't feel as hot as before, huh? <laughs> yeah. Got right. fun, huh? Yeah. No, I wasn't helping you because these rudder pedals, they're firm, they're hard. Mm -hmm. So you get the feeling when you're applying pressure, somebody's putting pressure against yeah, you. Yeah, I thought you you were no, like... I feel we're, we're not doing anything at all. Uh -huh. It's actually unsafe if two people do that. So it's actually me flying the plane, the airplane? Totally. What climb I gave it to you, remember? Oh, that? yeah, 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 you're right. And then uh, you were flying the whole thing until you turned final. Then I said I got it, mm -hmm. remember that? Okay. Oh, well, this is good? Yeah. Twenty-five. Yeah, I want to be an airline pilot one day. That's good. Just like you. <laughs>